Welcome to Picture This. I am Chenda at the Falk Library and I'm Jamea from the Billie Jean King Main Library. We, this is our monthly conversation sharing great picture books collection airing on the first Wednesday of every month. Danea, what do you have to share this Ooh. month? Well, for my first two books, I have, my first book is A Stack of Alpacas. This is written and illustrated by Matt Cosgrove. If you thought Stack of Cats was cute, which is this other book that he's written, you have to check this one out. In this book, you meet Maka, who is an alpaca. Let me show you who he is. <laughs> oh, okay, this is him. This is Maka. And he's an alpaca. So we also meet his nephew and two nieces who come over to go visit him. So we have the niece. Oh, those are the two nephews. And you also have a niece. So they love to jump on their uncle. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> they like, so when they want to go and visit their uncle, Maka, he has some rules. And they thought it was very cool to break every rule that Uncle Maka had. So that did not make him very happy. And he was actually really sad. They were doing a bunch of things that were not good, and they were making a mess. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> and, then, and then when he was not happy, he cracked. <laughs> so the, he cracked, and the, well, they all apologized. They made everything right, and Uncle Mako was happy. And but I really loved how cute the alpacas were drawn and the illustrations. And it's a very, it's a simple book and it's really cute. And the storyline is really fun. Um, so if you want a silly book uh, with some love, this is a book to read. And you really like the ending on this one. I thought this was really cute. And just look at their eyes. They're just I so cute. The, I think the second one is sticking his tongue out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're really silly. It's a silly bunch. Okay, so for my second book, I have Grumpy Monkey Up All Night. So this is a series of, of um, one of the, one of the many books in the series is Grumpy Monkey. He's a really cute monkey, and this was written by Suzanne Lang and illustrated by Max Lang. And uh, this is Grumpy Monkey. His name is Jim, and he's excited to go and to sleep over at his parents' house. So he invited his friend Norman. So this is his friend, Norman. He's a really big gorilla. So he's really excited, but like Jim's really excited to go see his family. And so he invites his friend, Norman, over to the sleepover to meet his family and his brother, Tim. So this is the family portrait <laughs> of Jim's family. And um, so Tim and Grumpy Monkey, who's Jim, have quite a sibling relationship with one of with, with each other. So you'll see when you're reading this book, it's kind of, it's really cute because you can kind of relate to siblings, how they act with each other. So when I was reading this, I really saw like, yeah, I could see kids just doing this together. Um, like just kind of the banter with each other. And uh, you get to see the fun activities that the family gets to do together. You get to read like all the fun things. But the cool thing is Jim loves to stay up all night, him and him were stay up all night. And his mother was a little hesitant and she said, even said, oh, staying up all night, you can make some grumpy monkeys. So they do all these things and need to read all about it. And um, let's see, even though they're staying up, they, um, they stayed up all night. And I thought the ending was quite, it was a quite grumpy situation, but you're gonna have to, read it and find out how the ending goes. So I really loved it. And if you like this book, check out many other books in the series. I also tag it into um, this picture of this for us. Uh, so if you do like this one, it'll be easy to find the other one. Okay, what about you, Chanda? Okay, I'm gonna share um, a very simple, very popular concept book of counting um, by Tim Norman, illustrated by Pierre Carlet Darby. One asaurus, two asaurus. You know, most of the dinosaur lover doesn't really matter, but this one is really wonderful to read because 
they call out um, one Osaurus, two Osaurus, and it rhymes in a counting game, three Osaurus, four, five Osaurus, six Osaurus, seven Osaurus, and then roar. So I can just imagine playing hide and seek and instead of um, counting um, alligator, you count one Osaurus or one dinosaur, two dinosaur. It's a really fun game. And I love how the kids ready or not, here I come dinosaur stampede and everyone hides behind the number. There's one, two, three, four, and you'll never guess who is the 10, the number 10 that's coming to catch them all. I won't show you that. It's really cool. It's a concept book of learning to write the number, but also spelling the number out. So you see the kids who are learning to recognize their written word for the numbers and colors Chanda too. I love the, I just love the illustration. Very simple and I can just imagine a very fun game of hide and seek dinosaurs. So that's a really cool one by Kim Norman. So and then there's this one. Now I could not relate this to the dinosaur until Towards the end, I saw the little girl playing with dinosaurs, but this one is Margaret's Unicorn by Brianne May Smith. She must be English because um, the author information in the back says so, and also the scenery, it's the country, um, the English, English countryside, and it's really beautiful. And it seems that Margaret is moving near to grandma and she has to go to a cottage that's a little bit far away, but they want to they want to be near grandma, maybe to take care of her or to help her out. And she's feeling kind of lonely, so she takes a walk to go exploring. She saw in the clouds some unicorn flying away, and in the heather she finds a baby unicorn. And I found out baby unicorn they only eat flowers and they only drink water that's been bathed in moonlight so beautiful to make their horn grow and um you know glow and then you know it's amazing could you imagine if you brought a unicorn baby unicorn home with your granny or your parents let you just cuddle it and play with it and keep it until the season change and that but that's what happened to margaret so she got to play with the unicorn until spring came and then its mommy came and took it home. But Margaret and her friend Abby still misses the unicorn. And right here, they're playing with dinosaurs. And if you read all the way to the end of the book in the back um, information, the back matter of the book, you'll see Random House included um, a teacher librarians that on their website that you can print out the illustrators, um, the author's illustration that you can use to color. But there's if you're trying to improve your vocabulary, you can also print out a word search. So that's a really good source. If you really love unicorn and you can just imagine having one as a pet. What do you have, Danea? Oh, well, I have two books, uh, another two books that I want to share. And the first one is Talking Is Not My Thing. <laughs> and this is by Rose Robbins. So in this story, we are looking through the life of this young girl here who's she's nonverbal and she has autism. Wow. So the pages have speech bubbles where we are reading her thoughts and um, also whenever her family or members are talking to her. So you can kind of see the difference between the oops. Oh, there you go. When you can see between um, the speech bubbles where when the brother's talking, it's just a just a circle and then when she's talking it has like a little more scribbles around it so you can kind of see a difference between it um so this is a really i really love this book when after reading it um so the pages have speech puzzles where we are reading her thoughts and her family who are they verbally are speaking and she's letting us know what she thinks while while she's eating or um or like how she's feeling so like he's telling her that they're gonna go eat spaghetti. And then in here is like, sometimes I try to use my voice, but the words don't come out right. And then, so she actually has a regular word bubble where it goes beep. 
And so, I mean, and, and they're okay with it, and it's okay. But then, I mean, during dinner time, she says, in her mind, all the noises at dinner are too much. I wish I could turn off my ears. So, but I still feel like, I still like to feel included. So, you know, she's still sitting through, even though it's tough, you know, so she, um, so she lets us know what she thinks while she's eating. And she also uses flashcards to communicate with her family. So she's watching TV with her family and she looks, she has this look on her face. That looks like the bathroom face. So she's like, hmm, I think I need one of my flashcards. So she goes and she tells her the caregiver that she needs to use the restroom. So she shows the, the restroom card. So they go use the restroom. And she's talking about like sometimes like she still needs help using the restroom. So um, I thought this was a very good book in um, letting readers have an understanding on what a nonverbal person with autism might be thinking. And this has great talking points to where the readers can go back in the book and talk about how the young girl might have felt at certain times during this, like throughout the book. Um, and uh, and you can also talk about how she communicates. Like she, there are times where she used um, the flashcards and there's also another time where she's with her brother and she just even points to the clock to let him know and he he knows like oh you know this is a time and there's also other ways that even um that like if but you can talk about like what other types of gestures or a language that you can use sign language is another way of communicating like if there was somebody that didn't talk um so i thought this is a really great book and it's a great introduction um and it's very simple and i really loved it and it was cute and i love the illustrations on that one okay so my next one it's a worrisaurus and it's like a, a very similar well to dinosaurs but this little dinosaur right here is named worrisaurus um, and this is by rachel bright and illustrated by chris chatterton so you have this cute little dinosaur and he wakes up and he's so excited about his day and he plans it and and he's like, he plants everything out. He's so excited. He brushes his teeth and he washes his top and tail and he gets everything ready. And then all of a sudden, he starts to worry about what's going to happen. And look at the color of the page. It turns blue because he's so nervous that everything that might happen wrong right, will happen. So as he's starting to worry about everything, a lizard comes along and tells him that it's going to rain and he started to even worry even more. So um, so what helped him was he thought about what his mother told him to uh, chase away the butterflies. So you go, oh, look, there's a little butterfly right there. So his mother tells him to chase the butterflies away. And you see where he starts carries happy things in his little tin. So what he does is whenever he starts feeling worried, he takes out these little objects inside the tin and it, and it helps him feel better. Um, so, and then all of a sudden, all of the worry went away. So he started feeling better again and the day started to turn out just like how he thought it would be. So this is another great book to talk about with each other afterwards. So understanding that sometimes people worry more than others and um, how to create dialogue that you can probably talk about when you know that somebody is worrying a little bit more. Um, maybe asking the child, what could you do to help that person if they're worrying? And, and also you can even create your own tin of that, like for happy thoughts. So if like, if you're just having like a, if you know that something big's happening and you're nervous, then maybe you can make like a small tin to kind of give you that support. So I really like this book. Okay, Jando, what about you? Oh, that's a good, those are two great books. <laughs> yeah. I have um, two to follow. Uh, maybe Warasaurus can um, use this book to meditate. It's by Miriam Gates. It is a nonfiction, a children's nonfiction, but they're just wonderful, simply explain steps that you can take um, to just um, be mindful, notice your breathing and stuff that kids can do and relax and of course it's wonderful if you can do it with them of course um, and um, it shows the different ways or different areas of um, to meditate or just to slow down and be conscious of your thoughts 
and breathing. And one of the items that I really like um, is to make a water bottle, um, glitter bottle. So you just have a few items. Um, see if you can find some that will stay afloat. I don't, um, I prefer to use clear, just regular tap water so that as the, um, as you shake your bottle, as you're feeling chaotic and kind of worried or just stressed, you can shake your bottle like you're feeling and then settle your bottle and breathe with it. And notice the glitter going down and then notice also the light and maybe some happy things that you can find that stays afloat. Those are your happy thoughts. And I just found these little um, plastic bubbles that stays up and it reminds me of like little fish that are still swimming. So um, because I didn't like to have glue gun or I didn't want to use glue gel or gel glue, I just use regular tap water, just make sure it's sealed. And then at the, the end, after you listen and you practice your reading, the author does include a um, very for easy four steps that you can take to meditate. And it's just simple, you know, sitting up and um, relaxing, but also sitting comfortably in what you do. And you do this for a stressful day if you're going to school or if you're having a bad day and just talk and exhale and that breathing in. And so it's really a wonderful book to share sit, breathe, listen, and relax. You can even do this while you're um, being read to. So that's a really good thing to practice before nighttime. It's a really good one. And then my other one to go with, don't, talking is not my thing or worry source. This is Doug and don't hug Doug. And he says right here, it's just not his thing. And he doesn't like it and it's okay. Written by Carrie Finnison drawings by Daniel Wiseman. It is really, really simple. The message is very light. We are all different. And personally, not everybody needs to be hugged or like to be hugged. And you should always ask somebody when you don't know them, if you can hug them before you do. Adults and children need to be given permission. And I love the opening. You can hug a pug, you can hug a bug or a slug. No. But don't hug Doug. He doesn't like it. No hug, please. And it goes through what he does like, what he doesn't like. He's a really interesting boy. He collects rocks, socks, what? But he just does not like to hug. And so can I hug you? You have to ask. This, these are identical twins. One says yes. The other one says no. So. You have to ask before you hug someone and it's really cool and I love it all the way to the end and Doug found other ways of greeting and showing affection by giving high fives or maybe a fist pump all that other ways or an elbow bump it's really cool I like my favorite the spinny five so you do the spin and you get high five and it's really cool so yes, he loves high five. Go ahead, high five. That's a great way to show, you know, not everybody enjoy a hug because they just don't know you. But you know what? His mom is so lucky because he loves her hug at bedtime. <laughs> so unless you're his mommy, he doesn't want a hug. That's a really good book. All right, Danea, what's your next two? Okay, so I have my last two, and this is in honor of Father's Day this month. So um, my first one is um, why, and, and there's a rainbow in front, and I can actually see my background. There's <laughs> another rainbow within a rainbow. Um, so this, <laughs> this is a really cute book. So this is uh, actually many of the books I picked are cute today, but this is why, written by Billy Dunn and illustrated by Reese Jeffries. Um, in this book, we see a young girl and her father. Oh, I'm just like not opening it well today. So, <laughs> so this is Why? a young girl and her father. So the young daughter is asking about how a rainbow is made and keeps asking repeatedly why to her father. And the father tries his best to explain it to his daughter as each question gets answered. You can see how nervous her father keeps getting. So he starts, he starts off good. He's like, yeah, I can answer this. 
and feel confident, and then she keeps asking why, and then the further you get along, you can kind of see his face kind of changing, and because it's kind of getting harder to explain because he's going really in depth into this, and then he's starting to sweat. You see him sweating here at the, <laughs> and then at the end, he's like really sweating here because he's talking about the wavelengths. <laughs> and he's sitting on the floor now, almost turning into a ball. Um, <laughs> so, because he's actually really good. And she's really loving it, as you can tell, as he keeps explaining everything. And then you see him curled <laughs> into a ball. <laughs> and he explains everything wonderfully. But I think as a parent, when a child keeps asking why, we can all get a little flustered. And when they keep answering, having to answer. So, you know, in the end, the dad is curled up in a ball. And the dollar tells him, loving that he could have simply just said, um, which means, like, where she says, you could have, oops, oh no, he, he could have simply said, and she gives him a hug. So when he, when that, it kind of just means like, oh, you could have just told her, like, straight, I mean, straightforward, where and he was trying to simplify everything, but we all know that sometimes there are some things that's really tough to explain, so I really thought this was a really cute, uh, uh, the father and child book, and I thought that was cute. So my next one is, and my, actually my last one, is The Little Fox and the Wild Imagination. And this is written by Jorma Takun and illustrated by Dan Santat, who's my favorite. So whenever he comes out with everything, anything, you'll probably see me talking about it. <laughs> so this is a story about a dad picking up his son from school. And, and it looks like his son was not having a good day. So he looks to Sam, looks really sad, and the dad's trying to cheer him up. So he does something great to cheer him up. He starts to play pretend with his son, and his son's like, eh, you know, like whatever. But, uh, but you, how can one resist the imagination play of pretending? So the father comes up with all these cool ways to cheer his son up by, as they go to the bus stop, they become race car drivers. And also, when they get into, race cars. yeah, well, that's all pretending imagination because they get to the bus stop and he, the son looks pretty happy, but then he kind of gets into a little mood again. And then you see the dinosaurs. So then all of a sudden, the dinosaurs come to life. <laughs> so the imagination just keeps getting wilder and wilder throughout the day. And as they get home, the imagination gets pretty crazy. And all of a sudden, there's robots with broccoli that turns into trees. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dad ends up in the, the ocean. Which is really funny because they made a mess during while well, eating dinner, and then so they have to take a bath, and ends up the dad ends up in an ice cream truck with a shark trying to eat him. So the dad is like, "What's going on?" <laughs> so this, but you can read this book and see how crazy the adventures get. Um, and so this is just a really wonderful book showing the love of a father and the lengths to uh, that he goes to to cheer him up. Um, so all you need is a good old imagination and the willing to pretend play and you have a good day. And okay, so Chenda, I know you have a lot of good books to show me. I know. <laughs> um, maybe um, the fox dad can give him a hug. Yeah. Want a hug. That'd be a good one. I have a book called I Am a Bird, Celebration of Dad Too by Hope Lim, illustrated by Hei Won Yong. And I noticed right away, I was trying to find out who, where is this little girl at? Trying to find out where does she live? Because the intro, but then I noticed there's some Korean text on the doorway right there. So I was thinking maybe like a village in um, Korea. Um, um, and it does say that the author Hope um, um, grew up in South Korea. So it's really beautiful. And so it's just a, a father taking his daughter to work, um, to school, and she always go, ka, ka, because she loves birds. And everyone that she meets and see 
wave and smile. So they're very happy people because she expects that because she's a very cute little girl. But then she noticed there was a woman in a blue coat and a big bag. She was walking, she did not wave and she did not smile. And that little girl made a, uh, a judgment right away. If she's not smiling to her or she's not waving, then she must not be a very nice lady. And her dad just said, well, she doesn't have to, right? She doesn't smile, she doesn't wave. And the little girl says, daddy, I don't like her. And the daddy says, she's just a lady taking a walk. And then they continue on their way day after day until they see the woman in the park. The woman is smiling. She's making um, bird sounds to the birds. She's whispering to the birds. And the opinion of the little girl as she sees the woman in a different perspective. She is a nice lady. And she's saying, chee, chee, chee. And the little girl say, ka, ka. And they have something in common. And the little girl feels like she's a bird again. So it's a wonderful lesson to talk about, you know, that maybe a neighbor or someone you know who doesn't always smile and wave and is cheerful, but they have their own time to be nice. So that's a really beautiful, I love the pencil drawing and coloring. It's um, a little bit different from digital art. So it's really nice and calming. And I love the detail of the neighborhood in the back ground too. So it's really beautiful to share all the details. And then another one, this is a, my other nonfiction picture book and Butterfly for a King. It's a silver medal winner, Susan L. Roth and Cindy Trombore. So it's a beautiful book that you, if you're sharing with a very um, young crowd like preschoolers, you can just read the top part, which is kind of like a rhyme. Um, almost like a poem, lava flow and island rose, island rose and form a chain. And it talks about the, uh, um, the island um, of, Ho of Hawaii. So all the islands, but the bottom part, it's very informative. It talks about um, the elementary, Pearl Ridge Elementary School students who advocated at the state representative to make the butterfly Kamehameha butterfly to be the, um, the state official, like the official state insect. And they wrote letters, they petitioned, and they actually got the law passed. And then they realized that the numbers, the butterfly numbers were shrinking and there wasn't that many um, left in Hawaii. So they had to find ways and work with the Department of Land and Natural Resource to find ways to reintroduce the butterfly back into Hawaii by um, using their website, um, citizen scientists, where people can go and if they spot the butterfly, their lava or their chrysalis, they can um, upload that information for the scientists to collect. And then that's how the scientists are able to reintroduce the um, Kamehameha butterfly back into Hawaii. Um, and I love the, um, the book also have phonetic spelling of the Hawaiian word that is so um, tongue twisting to say, and it's really wonderful. So this book is great for um, like natural science um, week or fifth grader even to do their science project and other um, really interesting read with great picture books to share for preschoolers. And then a very simple Father's Day, Sawa'i, um, so I just say Sawa'i Ka, that's in Thai, it's Ming Huang Ho. She also wrote, she also wrote a while ago, um, Hush, that's also a lullaby in Thai, illustrated by Molly Mead, you should see the little girl. Um, she plays peekaboo with her dad and he wakes up, Yutya, baby peekaboo, want to play? Where are you? So he, in every page, you just have to look carefully to find the little girl as she's hidden from hiding from her father. And throughout the book, he'll find like common animals you find in Thailand, like the dragonfly, the rooster, tiger, um, turtle even, and a crocodile. But finally, he's so frustrated. Yut ya, baby, this peekaboo, no more hiding. Where are you? Do you ever play peekaboo with the baby? 
and then they hide so well, you get a little scared. Where are they? So it's a really wonderful book to share. Peekaboo with Daddy. And then this one, it's a very easy, um, wordless picture book. The Boy and His Dad is by Pete Oswald. So I love this, it's called Hike. And it's just a very simple, very detailed, wonderful book to share about um, a boy and his father waking up really early, taking a long drive. This page is really wonderful. It shows the dad crossing the stream or the river with the wood. And then the boy is on the other side. He's too afraid to cross. And of course, dad is there to coach him to cross. And it's really wonderful. And eventually they get to the top, they take a picture and they plant a tree. Just be careful because the author in the back tells you planting trees in a public place is sometimes legal, sometimes not. So be sure to check out nationalforest.org if you want to um, plant a tree or maybe you can volunteer for Arbor Day or Earth Day with your mom or your dad. It's a wonderful book to share. And my last one, oh my gosh. Um, is Mr. Seahorse by Eric Carle. This is one of my favorite. It's an old one, but it's one of my favorite because it shows Mr. Seahorse for Father's Day. He's just being honored because he takes care of his babies. He, the mother lays the egg and then he fertilizes them, but he's, they're in his pouch and he stays with them. And you'll see him going out with the baby in his belly and you'll see him meet other fishes at the acetate page. You'll see other fishes hidden in there, but there's a picture of other fish such as um, stickleback, tilapia, curtis, um, nursery fish, pipefish, bullhead catfish, and my two favorite fathers who are taking care of their, their eggs is the tilapia because could you imagine he keeps his eggs in his mouth. Look at that. Mr. Tilapia laid her eggs. Now you're taking good care of them until they hatch. And Mr. Tilapia with his mouth full of eggs can only nod. Oh, you must be very happy, said Mr. Seahorse. And then he goes on and he meets Mr. Curtis. Oh my goodness, look, he has his egg. He stuck them on his head, on top of his head. Oh, and he has to take care of them until they hatch. Oh, that is such a wonderful book to share. And I bet your dad, can you imagine if your dad had to carry you? <laughs> on, his, on his head, look, and finally, oh, look, the seahorses, the babies hatch, yay. And it says, oh, no, one baby tried to come back and get back into the, the pouch too, wonderful. So this is a wonderful winner by Mr. Eric Carl. Never disappoint. So beautiful. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Father's Day, June 20th. And do something fun with maybe your uncle, your older brother, someone that makes you feel um, that you have a dad in your life. So that's a really good way to think of it. And then please be sure to um, look up these books if you want them right on our catalog with picture this 0621 if you want any of the books we mentioned and that we talked about and i just want to mention besides father's day um june 19th is the start of our summer reading program <laughs> you can log on to our library website to learn more about it it's going to take place from june 19th to august 14th on beanstack just go to our website um, closer to the date, then you'll find more information. They're going to have weekly prize and um, weekly drawings. And and also starting May, mid-May, May 18th, I think, we're going to go grab and go to yeah. the I'll restart. So we might see you guys at some of the branches that are open. Yay. Thank you for joining us for Picture This. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next month. Until then, stay safe. Take care. Have Bye. fun reading. Thank you. Bye, Janelle. Bye.